This video will show you how to use all the most common features of Prezi, including adding text, images, video, zooming in and out, and we'll cover some of the lesser known great features of Prezi, such as setting objects to fade in, nesting objects, adding background music, and more. I'm at Prezi.com, logged into my free account, and at what is best described as my Prezi dashboard. This lists all of my existing Prezi's. If I hover over an existing Prezi, I can edit or delete it, and if I click on the thumbnail of the Prezi itself, I can edit its name, download it, save a copy, share it with others to simultaneously edit, or get an embed code that I can use to put my Prezi on a website or within another web tool. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a new Prezi, so let me go back to my Prezi's, and to begin, I'll choose the new Prezi button. A window with several great templates will appear, and you may wish to start with one of these templates. I'm going to build my presentation from scratch, and you'll be better able to successfully customize existing templates after creating your own Prezi from scratch. So I'll click on the blank option, and then click the Choose button. I'm given a blank canvas with one circle frame. Unlike PowerPoint or similar programs, you don't add pages to Prezi. You simply work within this one large canvas. To zoom out to see more of the canvas, use the Zoom In and Out tool. To move around on the canvas, click on an empty part of it and drag around with your mouse. You can click anywhere on the canvas to type text. And if you select an object, you can use the plus or minus or the anchors to resize it. Clicking on the hand will allow you to move an object to a new location and you can rotate text using the circle that appears when you hover just off one of the anchors. The Edit Text button allows me to make changes to my text, and Delete does just that. Before I get started, I want to customize the appearance of my canvas and my fonts. To do so, click the Template drop-down menu. I can choose one of many already created templates and my canvas will immediately reflect my selection or I can use the Customize Current Theme option to access the Theme Wizard, which allows me to customize all features of the theme. 3D backgrounds can be fun if you have a really high resolution image, but I want control over where my objects appear on my background, so this is not the best choice for the project I have in mind. After choosing a background, select Next to set your default fonts. And finally, next again, to assign colors to your frames, arrows, and marker tools. When finished, click Done. Prezi started me with one circular frame because it's very important to group your text and images into frames, similar to how you group your ideas on various slides. This facilitates ease of movement when you need to adjust items and assists in linking in your path. I definitely want to use frames but more rectangular, not circular. So I will choose the round frame and then use the drop-down menu to change it to brackets. I'm going to pretend I'm creating this Prezi about Walt Disney and his history of ideas and decisions gone wrong that eventually led to his great success. My first frame will be about Walt's first idea that went awry to join the army. Because Prezi is such a powerful visual tool, I'm going to add an image instead of text first. I'll use the Insert menu and select Image. Before I do, note that Prezi can import existing PowerPoint projects, so if I already had a PowerPoint on this topic, I could choose this option and Prezi would take my PowerPoint slides and insert the content into separate frames, one for each PowerPoint slide. Images carry over very well and the text is editable too, so this is a wonderful time saver if you want to upgrade existing presentations. I want to add an image now, so I'll choose Image and search Google Images from right here to find an image for use. Click on the image in the results that you want and choose Insert. I'm going to click on my image to resize it and put it in my frame. Now I'm going to add text by clicking and typing. To change my text color, I highlight it and use the color menu. I'm limited to the three fonts I set up when I created my template. I can resize my text using these two buttons, or I can drag the corner anchors. 
To resize the text box, use the arrows that appear on the text box right edge. To add more text, just click and type. I know I want to group these text items together, so I'm going to add another frame to essentially group them. Prezi added the new frame automatically to my path, and we'll talk about that soon. After being rejected, Walt had to change his plans and instead became an ambulance driver for the Red Cross. I want to include an image I found of the young Mr. Disney with his Red Cross truck. So I'll again use the insert menu, choose image, and then I'll use the Select Files button to find the image I saved to my computer. I'll add an arrow here to show a cause-effect relationship. Okay, now let's adjust the path and nature of these features. Right now, over on the left, I can see my path or the order my show will play. Right now, only my entire frame and the text frames are linked in the show, but I want to zoom in on additional elements, so I'll add them using the Edit Path button. Click on any object to add it to Prezi's path. First, I want to start with the Army insignia, so I'll click on that. Next, I want both text items to show, so instead of clicking on the text boxes individually, I'll click on the corner of the rectangular frame to select them both then the arrow, and finally Walt's picture with his ambulance. As I click on each item, it is added to my path window on the left. I notice that one of my frames is in the path twice, so I'll delete one. And I can easily rearrange items in my path by dragging and dropping. Let's click Done, and then Present to see how it looks so far. Immediately, I see a couple of things I want to change, so I'll hit Escape to exit the preview. I don't like the bottom of the Army logo showing here, so I'll stretch things out a bit by shrinking them to create more space in between. If you select a frame, all items within it will be shrunk as one. As soon as I do this, I can see the preview update in my path window and can see that the logo no longer appears when the text is showing. I also don't like the arrow in the path, so I'll resize my frame to include it. And then I'll remove it from the path by choosing Edit Path. If I hover over the arrow, I get an option to remove it from the path. Finally, it's good design to repeatedly give context to your audience. So before I move on, I want to zoom back out to the entire frame. I'll do this by simply adding the bracket to the frame path again. Since Walt's plans were turned upside down when he was rejected from the army, I'll flip the picture of Walt here upside down. Let's preview the show to see the effect. Much better. Now let me show you how to reveal or fade in items within frames. I'm going to zoom out to find some empty canvas space and add another bracket for the next idea of Waltz that went wrong. Oswald the Rabbit was a cartoon character of Walt and his business partner's creation. However, it was lost through licensing to Universal. Let me add some images representing these ideas. I want these pictures to be revealed one at a time. First, I need to add this frame to my path, which I can do by right-clicking on it. Then, I can right-click on the frame's edge to choose Animate Frame Contents. Click on each item in the frame you want to fade in. And then choose Done. I want the images to show how Universal took over the Oswald idea in a sense, so I'll make the images overlap. When I preview in present mode, I can see how the fade-in works. I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to advance and to reveal the pictures. Looks great. 
Next, I'll show you how to add video and nest items within items, which creates a great zooming in and out visual effect. Let me create one more bracket frame and add information about one of Walt Disney's ideas that finally paid off. I'm going to click on an empty part of the canvas and drag to the right to find an empty spot. I'll add my frame and add my images and text. I also want to include a video here, so I'll use the insert button and choose YouTube video. I'll paste in the URL of a YouTube video I found of the original Steamboat Willie cartoon. Just as with an image, I can resize my video and rotate it. To get a video to work well in Prezi, I find it's best to add it directly to the path. And I've also learned that it's best to add all items to your path before you begin nesting them, where it's very easy to lose an item that you've shrunk really, really small. So I'm going to edit my path and add these items. I added the frame to the path twice to maximize the zooming effects, but I decided that linking to Cartoon Mickey might actually be better for visual appeal so I can easily fix this by taking the second frame link, number 11, and dragging it to the Mickey instead. Click Done, and now I can nest my items. I want Mickey to be inside the big idea text, so I'll start by choosing him, shrinking him, zooming in, and so on until I have him situated just where I want him. I'll do the same thing with the video. so it zooms in even further onto the cartoon Mickey himself. I'll hide it on one of Mickey's ears. Finally, I want to nestle the Disney castle right onto Mickey's hand, symbolic of the future he is pointing to and made possible. These pictures are layered in the order I added them to the Prezi, and if any are out of order, I can right-click on them and send them forward or backward in terms of layers. When doing a lot of zooming, two things sometimes happen. First, sometimes it's hard to select a small object. Just continue zooming in until Prezi recognizes it. Second, sometimes I'll get a can't zoom anymore message. When this happens, I sometimes have to adjust the scale of my object since I have apparently hit the maximum Prezi allows. Let me again add the frame to my path and preview to see how my zooming turned out. My presentation is looking good. If you exit presentation mode ever and feel crooked, just click on any of the items in the left path window that has the orientation that you want. For a final touch, I will use a high quality background image to serve as a metaphor for this entire project. Choosing the right overall image can really enhance your message. For example, if your presentation is a journey, you could use a road or a stone path and advance down the path by putting your frames at various locations along it. When I created a Prezi about Mount Everest, I used a picture of Everest as my background and we climbed Everest as I was presenting, where I had placed my facts and images from the base to the summit. 
One of my students created a Prezi about the history of Monopoly and used the actual game board as the background. I found this great image of several light bulbs representing ideas, but only one of which is lit. This will symbolize how many of Walt's bright ideas fizzled out unsuccessfully, but ultimately led to his great idea for Mickey Mouse, which resulted in Walt's eventual amazing success. Let me add that image right now. This is a high resolution image and I get a warning about loading too many high resolution images. I need a high resolution image so my background doesn't pixelate, so I'll keep my original in this case, otherwise I'd probably choose resize. I just added this image so it's on my top layer. I'll right click on it to send it to the back so it doesn't hide or cover up my other images. Then I'll enlarge it so it's the size I need for my background. Now you'll see another reason why using frames is so helpful. If I select the frame by clicking on its edge, I can move and shrink all items within it at once. I'll move Walt's ideas that fizzled out into the dark bulbs and his great big idea into the lit bulb. To finish it off, I'll add the background image to my path a few times for context and to start and end my presentation. I had to zoom out some for Prezi to understand what object I was trying to select, so try zooming in and out if you're clicking an object and nothing is happening. If you wanted to zoom in on just one area of your image, you can add a hidden frame. I'll use the Frame menu, choose Draw Invisible Frame, and add a frame around the lit bulb. I'll right click to add it to my path and put it right before my big idea frame for additional emphasis. Prezi has been periodically saving for me, but I'll manually save by clicking the disk icon before I run through my show. So that's essentially how you can use Prezi to create some powerful visual presentations that go way beyond a boring PowerPoint. There are additional features in the insert menu that you can explore, including adding symbols, diagrams, PDF files, voiceover narration to certain items in your path, you'll need to record these in MP3 format ahead of time, and you can add background music that will play and loop during your entire presentation. Let's click present and see how it looks. I will mute this music and point out how you can set Prezi to advance on autoplay as well. My Prezi is now advancing all by itself every four seconds. So explore, be creative, and use Prezi to create a presentation that your audience will remember.